What's going on my fellow bards and welcome. I thought I'd make an AE kiting guide here for the bard class here on the P99 green server. Uh, this is during the Velios expansion. So there's a lot of options when it comes to AE kiting uh, through the first uh, three or the two expansions after classic. Um, so I'm just hoping there are, you know, there are a lot of videos out there that do show AE kiting and it's really not too difficult to learn, but some co more commentary could be useful. I know some guides don't really walk through what they are doing uh, and we'll make I will make some more kiting guides later on as I've already kind of made some uh, but now I'll just explain how I actually do it and what I'm looking at uh, and my method of of doing it so um, I just wanted to provide, provide that more clarity and hopefully it helps you in your AE kiting and you can just crush through levels uh, so why do we want to AE kite in the first place so we want to do that to be able to kill um, a ton of mobs simultaneously and do that relatively fast, right? In just a few minutes, you can kill entire packs of mobs. And packs being here uh, at this stage in the game, you can kill up to 25 mobs or at least hit 25 mobs simultaneously. And you can kite them all down within just a few minutes of some kiting. So uh, getting into this, I'm kind of already assuming you know the basics of how songs work, uh, how to cast them and all that. I'll kind of get through some system requirements real quick and uh, why you may not want to do this type of kiting. Um, so also, this type of kiting will also help you, uh, you know, farm items and whatnot, gain platinum, um, as you can do this method indoor and outdoor, and you can do it single target as well. So you can, there's a lot of different ways to do this. Uh, I just want to elaborate on basic strafe methods and, and a little bit of theory that I've read and seen. Uh, and then show you actual kiting, and we'll do some instrument swapping on a, on a larger pack of mobs and just walking through that. You can apply the same method all the way. Here I'll show you on my level 2 bard, Mr. Litwist. Uh, he has no gear, and I'll show you how we're going to be able to kite and outrun mobs in order to achieve this. So this is very basic at level 2. It's just, it's just again, showing you this from the strafe standpoint. Uh, as you get higher and, and get more songs, like Celos Accelerando, um, we're going to be able to move much quicker and we'll be able to kite in a lot in a much smaller area. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to do the auto run auto strafe method of kiting. And what that means is we're going to be able to be hands free and we're going to be able to turn and whatnot with just our mouse. And we can, and because of that method, we'll be able to twist our songs more efficiently without any weird key bindings or skipping around of the actual, of the actual game screen and whatnot. And it allows us to kite uh, a much smaller profile in a much tighter circle. Uh, so real quick, why wouldn't you want to do this? Uh, mainly because if you have lag latency issues, you may not want to do this. You're going to have a ton of mobs next to you. Uh, you'll be very close to those mobs, and that could cause you to bog down a bit, and that could lead to getting you killed, which we don't want at all. Uh, so that's just one method. So to kind of help maybe assist with that if it happens, uh, in your display settings, maybe you can turn down some clipping plane, turn off your particle densities and whatnot, because we will have messages verifying that we have hit mobs with our songs, and then we can adjust if we are not. But uh, just kind of go through these settings and see if that helps at all. And if not, maybe this isn't the right method for you at, at this time. Uh, moving into the mouse section, right? We want mouse to be on, mouse look. We want to be able to right click and hold or, or however you have your mouse set up. You just want to be able to right click and hold it and I can move you know, forward with my left click and I can steer with my right so I can just kind of come around and I'm dancing here doing my little leg dance. Bam, 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 bam. Cool. Uh, mouse look sensitivity. So this is important too. Uh, I think most people start uh, slow. So you have a slower rate of your look speed as you are looking. This isn't your mouse speed itself. This is your looking speed. It is different. And I would highly suggest you making that all the way up so that you can look as you need to and then you can adjust that sensitivity later uh, if you go into mouse speed i have actually buttons on my mouse that control that and that is the rate at which your mouse is actually moving and that could help too and i'll get into why that might help or or hurt you later on uh, keys we are i am using the uh, standard w uh, asd keys um, set up. I, I realize that some people are still using their arrow keys. May not be the wisest choice to do that. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but WASD keys um, 
are good because you have your hot you have your hot key buttons right above if you're using the numbers, um, and you want to be able to uh, toggle or set keys to your strafe left and strafe right. So my Q key is when I <clears throat> go straight, I can Q to the strafe to the left while while running, and if I push my E key, I can strafe to the right while running. And we'll get into why that's important here in a second. Other than that, that's all you really need. Uh, hardware, I just have a mouse. I do have a gaming mouse, so I have buttons on the side. So I can actually twist my songs from my hotkeys, one, two, three, four, five, however you have them set up. And actually that'll be right in here. Kind of looks weird with this, but you would assign these for your hot buttons on hot bar, hot bar one, uh, one through nine or zero, right, for 10. And uh, then you can toggle, of course, these hotkeys and it also translates right to, right to your mouse with no extra uh, need to set anything else up. So that's pretty much it. Other than that, you just need a keyboard and a sense of adventure. So let's get into how to auto run and auto strafe and why, and then we'll get into why that's important here in a second. So as you can tell, I am in the window mode and that's important because you want to be able to toggle uh, or click on and off the actual game screen. So this is my game screen, right? You can see my desktop behind. Um, we want to be able to see that. I actually have dual monitors, so I can click on and off my other desktop, but that's exactly what you're going to do. So if you have, if you play window mode and it's the size of your screen, you have no area to click and you only have one monitor, um, you can resize the window or just move it over slightly so that you can click your desktop. Um, you know, over here somewhere. So what happens when you do that? Um, what happens if you are moving and you click off that screen? What happens is here, I'm going to do a turn like this, and I'm going to click off of my screen. And now I have no control over my character, but it is stuck in the last mode, the last movement uh, plane, I guess, uh, when, when you click off. So when I click back on, it's still doing it and I can actually control the character now. And it, as you can see, I'm automatically making this crazy circle, right? So now I can stop it by pushing any movement key. Um, <clears throat> there you go. So if you understand that, then you understand what we're about, what we are about to do. So we are, I'm backing up to get ready to run. So here we go. So I call this a five step method. There are other ways, right? There, there's another way, but I forget how to do it. Uh, it isn't some other guides. I just haven't had time to look that up. And what we're going on, what you can do is by pressing your keys, you can lock that mode in by hitting like enter twice or something, some kind of magic um, thing that, that you do. But mine is just to click on and off the screen because for me, it's just easy and it takes a second. So the five step method is remember clicking on and off the screen um, <clears throat> will be a step. So first we're going to, uh, and go forward, we're gonna move forward. I'm holding my W key, my forward key. I'm gonna incorporate strafe. Right now, I'm strafing to the right. As you can see, I'm holding down my strafe key and I'm gonna turn around for that work. <laughs> and uh, I'm clicking off my screen and then releasing those keys, releasing my forward and strafe key and clicking back onto my screen. And now I am auto running and auto strafing. And I can control with my mouse. This is the whole basis of what we want to do. And I am turning by just doing these short clicks. So <clears throat> this is what we're trying to achieve when I say the five step method. So that's it. Um, so again, forward, and incorporate the strafe, click off the screen onto your desktop, release those keys, your movement keys and click back on the screen. So let's practice that real quick and you'll be good to go. Um, strafing is uh, kind of a cool thing, right? Uh, when we strafe, we are actually moving in essentially two different planes at the same time, two different planes of movement. And so we're moving forward while moving diagonal. And what this does is I read theory on it. I can't prove it. I don't, I don't know if it's true, but it moves like your invisible center slightly forward. And it also allows you to run faster in this, in this, in this motion, but only when you are running straight without turning does this take effect and you run approximately 13% faster than normal run, I guess is what I read somewhere. I don't know. How to, I don't know how to calculate that. Maybe timing it from wall to wall or something. I, I, don't, I don't know, but, uh, but that is uh, why we would want to strafe and you can strafe anywhere. You don't have to do it just for AE kiting. You can do it anywhere to run faster. If you, 
if you do or don't have uh, any run enhancements. Right now I have no buffs or anything. Um, this is me just strafing. Okay, so cool. Uh, which way do we want to strafe, left or right? Well, that's up to you. And it depends on how you want to move. In this case, it depends on how you want to move the mouse. I am not an ambi turner. I can only turn left. And so what I am doing when I turn left and holding and clicking is I am dragging my mouse very slowly across, right from right to left, <clears throat> across my mouse pad to achieve a nice smooth turn. And that's going to become important for you later on. So if you, I am also right-handed. So if I were to turn to the right, I am moving my mouse away from me very slowly. Which is still doable. Again, do this however, which way, which, whichever way is comfortable for you is the way you want to do it. Um, so once you uh, determine which way you want to turn, I turn left. That's why my screens are over here like this. So you can see the mobs as they come in. Um, and you can do that on the right side too. Just <clears throat> swap or move everything over. So uh, the way that we turn, uh, we're going to strafe the opposite. Uh, since I turn left, when I turn left, I want to strafe to the right. And this will put me on like an outward type turn as I am moving. Right? Same if I want to turn to the right, then I will strafe to the left. And I will lock it in when I do that. Um, so that is how you would want to determine which way you go. So... Cool, so let's put this into some practicality here. Um, all I have, again, is uh, I'll Mr. Lit Twist here, miss, uh, level two. Um, all I have is a sword and some muffins and some drink. Nothing crazy, I'm not twinked out. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna show you what Strafe does for you. Um, so let's pretend that this is a brand new zone. Uh, when you enter any new zone that you're unfamiliar with, uh, I want you, I would, well, I, I would request that uh, you uh, experiment first, right? try some mobs out see what's good see how fast these guys actually move especially if you're not going to use any kind of run enhancement so all these mobs are essentially the same they all run essentially the same speed except for this wolf and through trial and error i have discovered that the wolf runs faster than any of these other mobs and will outrun your strafe so he will hit you continuously until you until he beats you down or you take him to the guards and kill him so whatever you might already be kiting, if that wolf enters, he's just going to hit you and you're not going to be able to kill him fast enough at level 2. Because your dot song only does like 2 damage at level 2 with no modifier. So, um, and the same for other things too. I think the fire beetles actually run a little bit slower even than these other mobs. So what we're going to do is <clears throat> just gather some mobs and put all this into practicality for you. And just give a little bit more theory and then we'll move on to actual kiting out in the field as you gain some levels. So I'm going to start strafing. I'm going to gather these orcs because they're, they're just going to aggro me normally. Here's even a centurion. He's yellow to me and we're going to get him into the kite as well. I'm just kiting just far enough away. Hopefully there he is doing these short clicks. As I click, it's actually sl slowing me down because I lose the strafe portion of the run. And I'll demonstrate that a little bit more here in some more detail. Uh, once I get all these mobs on me and I just kind of switch back and forth to like change my camera angle as I am running and clicking and doing all this stuff, gathering these mobs. But yeah, as you can already tell, the mobs are already falling behind and I can't see them. Um, this is good. This is what we want. And essentially I can pick up all of these mobs except for the wolf, uh, for the reasons uh, before. And, uh, oh, there we go. Jump away. And, uh, Hopefully this guy isn't killing the mobs. Okay, cool. And uh, so we are strafing away, and I did that shift T to be able to look behind you, and you can see those mobs. But don't keep it like that because you will get stuck in that in that mode. Uh, so coming back, clicking around. So I'm just gonna pick a nice area here, right? This whole area I'm gonna use to explain some more theory and show you what is happening, or what we think is happening. So right now. Um, I'm keeping the strafe portion. I'm doing small clicks in order to keep me ahead of the mobs. I can bring those mobs in by shortening the the uh, radius by clicking and losing the strafe portion. So it slows me down just enough so that these guys can come in. As you can see, I can get pretty darn close to them already without getting hit, essentially. As long as I you know monitor and uh, time this correctly, I can keep them right there on the screen. And as you uh, 
um, experiment with this, you want to learn your distances uh, for all mobs as you kite them down so that you know where you can hit them with your song and not get hit. So what I'm going to do is play an AE dot, our, chord, uh, our chords of dissonance, level 2. And uh, so what is happening when you play this is when you cast this song, it's going to count down 3 seconds. And in that moment right now, I actually just hit the mobs too. Uh, but in that moment that it that it is released, you can't see it unless mobs are in your are in the uh, diameter of the AE or in the uh, circumference diameter, whatever you want to say um, of that AE. The moment that it drops, pretend like you're dropping a circle <clears throat> behind you, right, or on the ground. You're just dropping a circle on the ground, but you are still moving, so you're leaving the circle behind you. The mobs need to be in that circle the moment that it drops. So the angles of these mobs is important and we'll explain a little bit more later on as we get faster and faster. Sometimes getting closer isn't as important as getting their correct angle in order to drop that invisible bomb and to ensure that they are inside of it. So as I come in, right, we just want to gauge where they are going to be and I'll start <clears throat> casting my song, I'm losing my voice. And here we go. You can see the winces. I made these a little bit bigger so that you can see the winces are the mobs getting hit. Um, and you're going to time this correctly to get right as it's about ticking down. We want to hit them all. There we go. So we just hit one, two, three, four, five, six orcs. Yep, six orcs all at the same time. And I'm essentially taking no damage. Yeah, I just took a few hits. Um, but that's all right. As you can see, I could I could take I get all these mobs if I wanted to, and uh, whoop, not get too close. <laughs> and there we go. So we can start killing these mobs, <clears throat> and uh, this is exactly what we are going to do all the way. And this is and doing these short clicks like this is only applicable when you don't have any other run enhancement on. So no cellos, no spear of the wolf, no journeyman boots, or anything else. And that is pretty much it. So we're going to take this. We're going to take everything we just we just learned here. And we're going to apply it. Also, another thing to note is um, speaking of like how these mobs are coming after you, it's important to note the angles. Think of these mobs as they are not actually turn. When you turn, they are not actually turning. They are realigning on you. So they, their, their, uh, their center is realigning onto your center. Kind of like if someone's auto-following you. If you ever watch someone auto follow you, you can see that when you turn, they are kind of shifty sometimes because they are realigning on you. Uh, these mobs are doing it, I don't know, like 10 times faster. So it looks like that they're constantly in a turn or whatnot, but mobs don't actually turn. They just realign. Um, they can turn, you know, on a dime because they're just shifting their, their orientation, but they're not actually like really turning. They're following straight lines everywhere. And the line that you create by aggroing them is what they are following. So they will continue to do that until you can outrun them far enough or you zone or you kill them. So we kind of take that visual and you can see how these mobs are acting and how you can kind of get them into a certain position that we would need to kite them down. So here's another blast as we get closer. Not stuck on there. <laughs> Not stuck on a cactus. And you can also jump. Jumping will uh, shoot you up forward. And as long as you keep the strafe in, you'll be good to go. And aggroing some more stuff. So if you even wanted to, now we can apply real quick the uh, the auto run auto strafe. I'm still holding my keys. So right now I'm going to click off my screen, release those keys, and click back on. And now I can be hands-free. <clears throat> and I can twist that one song um, as often as I need to to hit those mobs. As you can see, I'm already strafing away. Uh, being a low level, you, re you regenerate pretty quickly. So that is good for us. So we'll bring those mobs in by clicking and kind of turning a little bit. And bam, there we go. Got all those mobs hit. So just imagine you having all of these mobs. And you can then just run around and kite them down. This is what kiting is. It's just you uh, trailing the mob behind and hitting it from a distance. As you go, right? Just like flying a kite. They are your kite. So here we go again. Um, during the lower levels, it's not that viable. It's probably faster for you to actually kill things one-on-one -on -one really quickly uh, to gain levels. 
And I would probably do that until about level five or eight. Level five, you get your Cellos Accelerando, so this becomes a little bit easier as you gain a movement uh, enhancement. And uh, level eight, you get your Stringed Instruments, which will be the modifier for your for your song, so that if you go into other zones, you can uh, essentially double the damage you are doing. So that is also important. I'm just running around to get these mobs off. Run. And uh, I will see you on the next character. All right, so I'm here on, on McTwisty here, my level 30 bard here in Ferona V. And here I'm just going to show you what a, a, a bigger kite looks like, and we'll incorporate everything that we kind of learned. Uh, we'll still incorporate the strafe and everything else, and we'll have Celos Accelerando on. And showing you how to really tighten up the circles, and you can kite in very small areas. And you can apply this all throughout the rest of your kiting. And this, this applies when you first get Celos as well, level 5, and moving on. Um, so first, before we do that, let me talk real quick about some different macros that you might be interested in. Uh, well, only one, really, uh, that I have. And if you can see here, um, some I, I got some tells about twisting songs and whatnot, and if it was if it can be made any easier. And I have seen this before. I used to use it long ago. Um, we don't have the ability to use uh, melody slash melody. That was something that was introduced into live, uh, you know, a long time ago, and that would allow you to. It would automatically twist songs for you. You could type slash melody one two three four whatever whatever it was, and it would twist them all. We don't have that on on the P ninety nine green servers. Um, instead, everything is hand jammed. So I mean, we're literally clicking all these songs and twisting and all that. Uh, one method that is easier is to have this macro um, song one. Actually, let me move this down just a little bit so you can see it. Um, and what this does is I have it as song one. And what I do is I make one of these for every single song that we have, one through eight. And the macro is to slash stop song and then slash cast one. So song one corresponds to your first gem, number one, and that's what it will cast. And then so on and so forth with all the others, with song two, three, and for me, I just have eight for the purpose of the video. I don't actually use these, but this is how you can do it. So by hitting one, uh, it will twist, it will stop the song. And as soon as that song ends, bam, you hit the next one. So that makes it a single stroke key. And if I hot key it here on my on my actual hot bar, I can hit one and it will cast. Just do it one one tap and it'll start the next. In order to stop the songs from playing, right, you have to click on the actual gem to stop songs completely. But that is one way to do it. Uh, there are macros where you can have them twist the songs as well. So you can stop song, cast next, and all that. It gives it some timing and it will cast the next one. Um, but I don't I don't use it, right? I, I hand jam because I can. Uh, hand jam meaning I hand twist everything because I can I can be in control of it if I get you know uh, missed notes or something of that nature then I can uh, just correct it very easily so anyways um, what we will get into here is uh, so as far as macros uh, instruments and songs so now we got um, two songs at our level 18 then in disruptive, disruptive discord this is level 18, and the skill is Brass Instruments, so it will be enhanced by Brass Instruments. Second will be our Chords of Dissonance, our level 2 song again, uh, which is enhanced by the skill Stringed Instruments. So that is two different instruments that we are going to use uh, while doing this. Um, the modifiers that I have are the horn, four denons, right? Just a basic horn, 20 modifier, and a loot. Uh, basic loot, which is a, also the 20 modifier. Uh, and these correspond with the songs. And as I'll show you a little bit later, we will get into uh, some actual uh, instrument swapping, and uh, and this will make sense a little bit later on. So, uh, one way, one quick way, if everyone know the damage of you know these instruments and whatnot, what it's actually doing for your songs, uh, you you would need to find the base damage of the song, and you can do that by either maybe dueling someone and seeing what their hit points decrease to, um, and just take that difference. Uh, and it'll tell you what the base damage is. So the base damage without any modifier, um, and what you would do with that, you would find that number. Let's just theoretically say that that base damage was 50. Uh, then we would look at our brass instrument, right? Our horn, which is our brass instrument, and this is a 20 modifier. So you would times 50 by 20, and then you would divide by 10, and that gives you a very good estimation of what the damage will be when you equip it. Uh, another way, another quick way to do that is also just taking the base damage times uh, instead of divide by 10, you just move the decimal place over 1. So in this case, it would be 2.0, so 2, right? We would times 50 by 2 to give you 100 damage. That's 100 damage per mob, uh, 
per tick, per uh, every six seconds or so, uh, when that when that song pulses. So the same with the loot, right? Find the base damage, and then you do that. So if this was a, let's say theoretical, this was a 25 modifier. Again, take the base damage of 50, and then we would make it 2.5, and that would give us what? Quick math, uh, 125. And that give you 125 damage if I had a, a 25 modifier there, and uh, and so on and so forth. You do that with a lot of different songs and with like resistances and stuff. So that's a quick way to uh, know what you're getting. So if you invest in a loot or, or another horn or something like that, you'll know how much damage you're actually getting and, it is, and is it worth it. Um, cool, got a little kite going on. Um, other than that, uh, the next part will be bunching up mobs and whatnot, right? That is a skill in itself. And real quick, just to show you some different methods, I have my drum equipped. And uh, I'm just going to pull a few here just to show you some pulling techniques in case you don't know. Uh, one method at level 12, you will get Bo Bruce Goes Boss for Bellow. Level 12, that's a direct damage song that you can use to pull. So on my hotkeys here, I have my main twisting macro or hotkeys. I made another page where I can do that and twist in cellos and heal if I need it because I will run around and aggro these mobs, all these growlers, snarlers, what have you. And you can get body aggro. I will, I will also strafe while doing this as to minimize me getting hit. And uh, I'll start pulling through this place. I say it's an art form because typically, well, in this zone alone, uh, there's all these different mobs, right? And there's uh, friendly mobs here too, that if you aggro them like this pilgrim, you know, they will attack the mobs. They will attack the, uh, the drove logs here. And, uh, and you can also aggro them yourself, which I have done and they can root and all that stuff as well. And they will get you killed. <laughs> Even though they're allies. I've done it. I've done all kinds of weird things and dying and all that. And that is part of the game here. Uh, when that is the risk to reward ratio you have, you have every every second is a chance you have to die and when you get gather more than 50 mobs you're going to die instantly and i'll show you what that looks like because i uh, actually died twice making this video right now <laughs> and uh from that very instance and another one was that my pack split and i didn't see it and all that kind of stuff these are all things that uh, you can learn uh that i will show you after i do these kites and instrument swapping and whatnot so uh, this is what we're doing, right? Uh, what, what you can do, I'm just body aggroing these things. I haven't even casted a song yet, but if I did, this is what it would look like. I would target and cast my song, and he's already aggroed anyways, but that's what I would do. And then you can run them around and have them aggro other mobs. So the pack is right there, and here's another mob, and you could just run it through that line of sight, and there he is. You pick them up into your kite. So that is one way just to get some mobs. So... Uh, pulling is an art, right? Because you want to stay far enough ahead of your pack in case you do get stunned. Uh, it, it's a three-second stun. It's the longest stun. It's the longest three seconds you'll ever you'll ever encounter because you just won't be able to move. And that pack is coming, and it has caught it has caught up to me before because I was just too close, and uh, it was just a bad day. So keeping them nice and well and clear, you can see how many I already have, and I'm gonna get a lot more. So I'll, I'll be right back with. A whole bunch and we'll get into exactly the steps I'm doing to get into this kite all right so we got a nice kite going and I'm running to the Lake of Ville, or sorry the uh, swamp of no hope zone line the other place where I normally kite is a little full uh, of people kiting but nonetheless here we go so I have all these mobs right one, one technique since this is a huge open zone you can kind of zigzag around the zone and that will also gather up the mobs uh, very slowly as well and I'll show you how to just kind of just bring it in nice and slow as we get closer. So what I'll do now is just equip my horn, since that's the first song I have in my lineup. I have Denon's first, and then I have uh, Chords of Dissonance, so that's important as we get into it. First, I'm just going to do the basic kite. Hopefully, I don't get uh, whacked either. And I will walk through exactly what I'm doing, and then I will even change my screen. If you press F10, actually, do it right now. Um, you will be able to see my mouse. It doesn't hide your mouse. And this is me turning and you can see how fast my mouse is going. And I will be able to show you that as we get into it. So I'm going to kite right over here, picking a nice area, uh, to do this, even on a, like a gradual slope is fine. Uh, but you want to, we're going to, I'm going to try to keep them in the nice flat area over here. So I am already strafing. I'm going to engage the auto run auto strafe, clicking off my desktop, releasing those keys and coming back in. So I'm just going to keep these nice and wide right now as I kind of talk through it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one dot and then cellos and the other dot and then cellos just to keep it up because I don't want to have to strafe away. 
Um, and I can and I will be able to show you what that looks like also if you want to do just that method. You don't have to use cellos. Uh, again, you can do this any way you want. This is just the, the basics that I know and what I kind of taught myself through trial error and reading a whole bunch of other guides and watching videos. So here we go. So what I'll do is like a spiral, right? I'm going to do a spiral and how this is all about mouse control. Uh, just nice and smooth, cool, calm, collective. Um, you just want to come in gradually. Don't get too aggressive or overly aggressive because you will fling yourself into these mobs and they will get you. Um, but it's, this is also going to be uncomfortable, right? This is an uncomfortable moment when you try to learn this because these mobs will be in the corner of your screen. They will be right there on your butt <laughs> uh, trying to get you. And you just got to maintain. So when I make a smooth circle, I am keeping my mouse pull at a constant rate. If I want to go inward, then I increase it. And if I want to stop, then I, I could just stop my movement and it will strafe or release the keys and it will then actually engage the strafe portion and off I go. So anyways, let's bring the kite in and they should be nice and gathered. One thing you can do to check is press shift T in the title screen. You can right click and drag and you can see the big blob of, of drove largs right there behind me. So pretty cool. Um, and over here in this zone, if you're interested in kiting here, uh, there's no mobs that path through here. So that is also... Uh, a, a, a why people don't believe really kite over here. So okay, let's bring it in. So right click is in. Uh, my cellos is on. I'm bringing them in nice and slowly, nice and gradually. And I will start playing my song because I know they're coming up. And you already got some hits. Actually, I'm going to play it one more time. And just come in a little bit more. Here they are. And then back to cellos. Oh, my cellos went away. And as you saw, I released my mouse and off I went. Um, you just got to be quick and noticing that. Uh, so that is an actual error on my part. <laughs> I kind of waited a little bit for my, I, I timed the uh, missed tick, the tick of cellos. Um, but that's all right. So come back in. Here we go. We're just going to give it one blast. And back to cellos. So you can see how far it is. Uh, I'm just readjusting my mouse now. And here we go. And that I'm going to try to get uh, chords of dissonance on. Didn't work. Back to cellos. That just means I have to tighten it up a little bit, re-engage. So I'm going right back to Denon's first. There's a nice hit. You can see all the winces on my uh, right screen down there. And here we are. There is Denon's, or sorry, Chords of Dissonance, and back to Cellos. And this is all I'm going to do until all these mobs die. Um, if you have a mob on your target that isn't dying, it's because they have you definitely have over more than 25. And you can cycle through by pressing Tab, and you can find a mob that then is losing life and you can use that as a gauge to see when the first uh, pack of 25 is about to die. So there we go. You do get a lot of resist. I am level 30. I started here as reference at level 23 just to try it out and I, all I would focus on is pulling savages because they are the lowest level and it does work. Uh, snarlers and stuff you're not going to be able to hit at that level so you just you know you can train them away, zone them, do whatever and then just go back out in the field and pick, off, pick up some more. Um, before that, as a quick reference, uh, I did I attempted uh, unrest at level seven, just cutting the courtyard. And if you just do that and practice that, which I can even make a video of as well, uh, I got me to level 18, and then I went to Lake of Illumin, uh, all the way to 23. You can kite the north side of the zone, the west side of the zone, and the east side where the couriers are, where everyone camps the uh, the Goblin Gazashi ring. Anyways, let's get back to this. Um, so this is all I'm doing, right? Just keeping it nice and smooth. Don't get overly aggressive. If you keep missing, that's okay. Rather you miss, then you get too close and die. So you're just going to find that, that perfect angle. Get them right there in that corner. Because um, that's usually where all mobs are going to be anyways. Or just off of the screen. But uh, again, practice on one when, when you come here. Or, you know, just how, however many. And... Uh, and that's it. I have no twin gear. I have all rawhide gear on with basic instruments, and I'm killing these just fine. And you'll kill them just as fast with anything else. Um, so there you go. So here in a second, I will switch. Uh, actually, here we go. I'll do F10. I can tell what songs I'm playing by the uh, the song effects. So here I come in with Denon's. Oh, you can't actually see any of my mouse now. Why is that? Well, let me try this one more time. Maybe because I, uh, okay, so there we go. If you press F10 while, while doing it, it will hide the mouse, but if you don't do it, then 
So there we go. You can see my mouse, how I'm doing it, and it will go off the screen because I'm still pulling. Keeping it in there. Oop. Cellus came off. Strafe away, right? Just release that mouse. Not sure, exactly sure what's happening. Maybe that. Maybe I shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> but you can see right there, I'm strafing, and I can control that and still hit them. So that's also unique, and we learned something new just now. <laughs> so there we go. All right, so let's get into some instrument sw uh, instrument swapping real quick. What I'm going. This is how I do it. There's are there's other ways. Again, do this however you want. Because of my UI piece, I'm only focusing on my hot buttons. And what I'll do is they are unlocked. I move them up here because this is where I am always re readjusting my mouse and turning. And what I'll do is I'll come in here and uh, I'll get my secondary instrument, my secondary weapon and putting it here on the bottom. And then I'll grab my loot. It doesn't actually need to be there or even there. You just have to have it. What we're going to do is put it on our cursor. So again, I will take that, lock it there so I don't move it or misclick and get myself in trouble. And the loot will be on my cursor. And as we come in, we're going to twist and we're going to simultaneously, when we go back to uh, Cellos Accelerando, where all we're going to do is swap out the instrument to play the next song. That's all we're doing right there. Boop. Just like that. Nice and easy. So we're going to you know, come in, twist, twist, twist. We're going to come in, then, uh, then re-engage just like that. So it's a little bit of like a quick click and, and catch yourself running and keep that turn in. Um, the other thing to note so here we'll bring it in and we'll start. The other thing to note is making sure that you play the use the right instrument for the right song. So here I'm back to cellos, swapping out, and now I'm playing my chords of dissonance. There we go, back to cellos, swapping out, and re-engaging nice and smooth. Come right back in, nice and steady, and then bam, and there you go. That is how I instrument swap doing this. And you can do this. You can set it up however you want. For me, this is. It's just easier for me to do that. Why do we do this? Because we're maximizing the damage that we're doing and we're killing these things faster, right? With these instruments, we are doubling the damage that we are that we are doing. Not only that, but with both songs. So there we go. And you'll learn how to like catch it quick too. You'll you'll come in and be able to, you're out here, then bam, you're just right in. Bloop, just like that. And knocking them. Right? That's a little sketchy, but <laughs> But again, right, it's uncomfortable and it takes a few kites just to get it down and you'll have this, you'll be a champion, right? Just if you're too far out, sometimes it is the angles at which they are coming. If they're coming in, because remember, you're dropping that invisible, an invisible ring, you're leaving it behind you. And those mobs need to be in that ring at the time that it lands. Uh, so um, this guy is running. He's the, he's the last, he was another pirate in my kite. Don't go chasing them. You can kind of time it too if you want to get them down. I'll kind of just come in here. Oh, I already missed my song. Got a missed note. That's all right. I'll try to get that on. Nope, didn't work. But here, I'll just come over here, kind of just time it. All right, and get him. And he resisted. <laughs> That's all right, you know. You just mess around with it, and uh, this, is all, this is all we're doing. So right now, I'm just using back to one song. Oop. Let's see. Uh, you can you can still do this. You can, you can still control it. Um and all that. So a lot of resistances, but that's all right. Uh, just keep at it and work them down, work them down. Some are going to be red and some you're not going to be able to hit. So as soon as you, you know, whittle all of these down, uh, you will be able to, to tell that you either have all snarlers and you're just not going to get it um, or what have you. So that is my instrument swapping technique. Uh, again, you can set these up however you want. There are other, other videos out there referencing this very technique as well. And they do it just from the bottom. Um, but because I'm using my mouse, uh, you're very limited in what you can do, right? Any, hitting any other movement keys will stop me, and you don't want that at all because these mobs will crush you instantly. Um, but cool. And that is that. So um, other things uh, that I might consider, uh, may, maybe consider is ultra vision items because it does get dark out in, the, in these areas. Uh, and to be able to see and kite at night is also another cool challenge uh, to pull all these mobs and, and get them all down. Um, I meant to kind of show that the uh, ring that I'm making, you can tell that I've been in the same area for quite a while. Um, 
So generally a very small area that I've been kiting in. And usually if I'm just using one instrument, you'll have like a perfect ring um, and all that. Another thing you can do is making the macros uh, hide corpse all or corpse, you know, unhide or, or, or whatever it is. Now we'll hide all these corpses because there is potential that if you are clicking like this, you can loot the corpses. I haven't died from that yet, but I've always been pretty darn close. Uh, because just for a moment, it stops you for just a fraction of a second. But as long as the auto runs on, um, it is pretty, pretty good. Uh, it, it will, it will, sorry, it will uh, keep keep having you run even if you did loot a corpse. But that's it here. And uh, again, I'll just burn these mobs down. You can already see I started with eight percent already, and I've only killed, you know, well, I guess you know, quite a few, and I'm already at fifty percent into my next level and I still have this huge pack with me and actually this isn't even this still isn't even as many as I would pull I would pull the entire zone and kite down as much as I could and uh, and doing all that so uh, real quick let me uh whoops see looted there perfect example that you could still survive <laughs> while doing this so I'm going to move this back down and as you also can see I'm also looking down because you can tell the uh, the distances that you need to be uh, to uh, the judge right if I'm looking up like this it's just really weird really kind of sketchy doing that and that has gotten me killed because you might misjudge the size of the models and all that but as you come up it's something that you could just learn you know how again however you want to do this it's okay by me as long as you're getting experience and just destroying mobs um, but this allows me to gauge exactly where they are the distance from me and all of that so uh, Real quick, actually, we'll just let cellos drop, and we'll just do a little bit of kiting uh, with it off. This is all I really have to show, um, that it is possible. You can see, like, kind of the small ring-ish that there would be. Oh, looted again. <laughs> and uh, that's also a good reason to hide the corpses, uh, so that it could be a macro, too. So now I'm just strafing, right? We'll bring them in with short clicks. Uh, don't over misjudge this, because after you run really fast for a long time, you might uh, miss and, you know, you might miss gauge what you need Ooh, jump away because I looted again but there you go I'm already getting the winces this angle is now different and how I'm leaving uh, the AE there you go you can do it just like that but now you know my, my circle is much bigger I keep wanting to hit cellos so that's kind of funny and there you go so this is without any run enhancement on and you could just leave the song on Right, just like that, if you wanted to, and then go right to the next. Uh, doing this and hitting him with uh, chords of dissonance might be a little bit harder. Oop, jump away there. Let's not maybe kite around the corpses. So <laughs> don't learn my lesson yet. Uh, but this is it, right? Strafing, right? I'm not. I don't have Spirit of Wolf. I don't have J boots on. I don't have Cellos Accelerando on. I'm just kiting him down, nice and easy. It keeps them you know, right in that good distance. All I have to do is like a short click. And they will come up. And I can retwist it if I want. And there you go. These mobs are almost, they're dying. So I'll just sit here and do that. So hopefully this helps and it kind of uh, explain what's, what's happening here. And hopefully uh, you can apply these methods and, and get to kiting yourself. Um, again, test these mobs out, you know, just, just a few at a time so that you don't die. And, uh, and you will be able to do this in no time. Um, have all the confidence in the world. So real quick, I will whoop, jump away. Um, I will show this one more time on my level 60 bard, just to show you the whole progression, right? From level two all the way to 60. And uh, to show you that it is the same exact method. And that will be in the uh, Mecca, the Mecca zone of Dragon Necropolis, which is the haven right, of, of experience. That is the ultimate. And... Uh, I'll do a four song twist and I'll have uh, Spear of the Wolf on and all that kind of stuff. So I'll be right back. All right, welcome back. I'm on my level 60 bar left in here in Dragon Necropolis, just pulling the front half of the zone right now, just so I can show you guys again. We're going to do the same exact method as I did on the previous character at level 60 here in an indoor zone. Uh, and I'll explain why this is the mecca of EXP here. So I'm just gathering up these guys and uh, we'll get into it doing the same method, same thing. So if you understand it and you get it, no problem. You can skip all this <laughs> and that is it. 
Um, so we're going to use four songs here. We'll use all four songs. And this method allows you to land all four songs pretty easily. Um, we we'll use level 59 stringed instruments. That ends with This is also a magic resist debuffer, so it allows you to land these other songs pretty easily uh, once you get that. Uh, the next will be Cellos Chords of Cessation, which you get at level 48, which is your stringed instrument as well. And then, of course, that ends Disrupt of Discord at level 18 with your Brass Modifier and Chords of Distance level 2 with your stringed instrument. So we're going to prioritize the uh, loot here because we have three stringed instruments and one brass. Luckily for me, though, I have some cheater items. I do have a primary loot, which is Lyrian's Mystical Loot. And uh, that's a 25 modifier and my Epic, which is an all modifier, so it covers the brass section as well of my orchestration here <laughs> with an 18 modifier. So that is all covered. So all we're going to do right now is uh, we'll bring it in and I'll kind of talk some more about what I'm doing. Again, right now I am strafing and clicking off the screen, release the keys, and there you go. Hands free, and we're free to move about the cabin and knock and melt down these spiders. So we're going to bring it in nice and slow, right? As you get good, uh, better at, at doing this, you can come right on in. You get nice and close here. You can almost see their eyeballs, the little beady bug eyes. Um, and I'll just start twisting here. And there we go. So we start landing those dots. And you can see I wanted to show you the uniqueness of these models. So spiders are a larger model, but their centers are still small. So this allows you to still get in nice and nice and close and, and comfortably in there. <laughs> just nuzzle up in there um, to uh, kite them down while doing this. So again, using smooth mouse pulls. Don't get overly aggressive. Right, they're going to get down to like the last percent. And you're going to want to get in there and just dot, dot, dot. And I guarantee you. Why? Because it's happened to me that even at 1%, this pack can slaughter you in an instant. So don't take that for granted. If you don't feel like you're in, a, in the right spot or uncomfortable, just get, you know strafe away and just reset. Nice and smooth, cool, calm, and collected. Uh, also, I'm using track. Right? You get tracking at level 35, which is an awesome tool. Not just because you can find things that you can't see, but it allows you to see how many mobs you have. So you can count through there real quick, which I didn't. There's maybe about 18 or so mobs. I only pulled the front half, and I didn't pop any other like swarm beetles or anything. Um, and uh, you can kite the entire zone. So there's the front half and the back half. I'm gonna make, I'm, I will make a guide about the zone specifically in another video. And all the things there is that you know that I can think of, at least, that deals with Dragon Necropolis as a whole. And uh, that will be later. Um, so yeah, this is it. Uh, this takes me about six minutes to kite down a, a pack of mobs like this. Granted, I do have those those instrument modifiers, so that helps greatly. And uh, I do have a spear of the wolf. I have the blood orchid katana, the cast spear of the wolf, on myself. Um, but get some uh, sal, some sal pots, some spear of the wolf pots, and or J boots. Right, J boots does work. But now you're. The only uh, thing to consider is timing, so that is going to be your biggest um, obstacle, is the timing of those boots and how fast you can kill these mobs. I have not killed these mobs with anything else but what I already have, because I only learned this you know, a few months ago when I already had this equipment. Um, so that was just an advantage I, I guess I had. Um, I did not learn how to do this until I was already level 60. I never knew how to AE kite before, and I kind of just did it to get my very own face spider carapace instead of having to buy one. And I kind of just learned it, and you know, kind of just on the whim, uh, by just trying it out on one, because no one was ever here. And I said, you know what? Let me uh, just experiment a bit. And lo and behold, now I feel like a a kiting master, I master the kite. Um, I have not yet mastered it. I don't. I don't think by any means. But uh, um, the uh, zone repops in about 30 minutes. And how much experience do you actually get? Because right now I'm at 100%, so you can't see it. But with a full clear, right, the front and back half, everything pulled, you can get anywhere from 18 to 20% a clear. So that's every 30 minutes at level 60 solo. So that is pretty hot. That is awesome, right? Uh, I don't know what it is at lower levels because I was never lower, and I'm not going to de-level this character <laughs> to, to attempt to do that. I might level another bard just to see, but I mean, I'll ask other bards who are that level how much they are getting, or if they have ever done it solo. I know that they have, and hopefully they have like a EXP counter, like an actual percentage on their on their bars to know how much they're really getting. 
because uh, in the old UIs, you didn't really know. You just had to guesstimate what it was based on where the yellow was, where the yellow was, and where it is. So, um, but this is it. So if, always feel free to reach out in game, right? I hope this guide helps. I hope it helps in some capacity uh, to see what I'm doing here, how to do it. I hope I have explained everything clear enough, and you understand what it is I'm doing. Hopefully, you can do this too, and just crush mobs, get that experience. It is the fastest leveling I've ever I've ever encountered, and this gives me a whole new perspective of when they say back in the day when bards figured this out, right? The real, the real OGs, they uh, were able to kite down the entire zone at one time, not just limited to 25 or four or whatever, but. Uh, they were able to cut down entire zones in one go. Like, that is ridiculous. It just sets a new perspective of what they were able to do. And I, you know, hats off. Hats are off. That's just amazing. Uh, but even with 25 mobs, I mean, you are just, it, it's just effortless. It's just easy. Uh, and again, you can apply this to so many different zones all over the place. Um, so get out there and experiment. Again, it doesn't even have to be a pack of mobs. It could be one mob. And with one mob, you can just use your normal direct chance to keep it in a nice tight area so if you're unable to kite it in a big area you know you can just make these small circles just like this exactly as I'm doing um, granted you can you know you can kite larger model mobs like that uh, but you can't AE kite down like you know hill giants and stuff because you're just gonna get, keep getting hit but yep this is all I got these are about to go down hopefully hopefully I don't go down and uh and I'll keep more videos coming as I can, and some more explanation about things. Just want to keep things up to date. I do not up, I do not um, edit these videos really. I just splice them together, or just, just stop and start the video. So I want you to be able to see it in real time. I don't want to I don't want to show you some edited stuff that you know is kind of questionable or whatever. So this is it in the moment, me talking while I'm doing this. Um, so I hope this helps, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you made it this far in the video. <laughs> Hats off to you, too. Um, there are going to be some bloopers at the very end, so stick around a little bit longer, and you see me die a few times um, on Big Twisty. I was getting pretty pretty upset. <laughs> but that is it.